Now, speaking of change, we are always seeing our technology advancing, developing and growing. And whilst we do actually have the hardware to make partially resist, partially water resistant smartphones, I wanted to know why aren't they completely waterproof? I mean, I'm definitely that person who accidentally drops my phone, whether it be on the tiles, in the water, definitely at the beach, even in the toilet sometimes. <laughs> but I know that even though I'm very much covered by things like Apple Care, sometimes these big companies don't often support water damage in the warranties. So at the moment, I'm speaking to Dr. Ritesh Chug, Associate Professor of Information and Communications Technology at CQ University Australia, discussing all things waterproof phones. Ritesh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jesse. And and you are not the only one who drops phones into into the toilet. <laughs> There's plenty of people who do it. Oh my gosh! I'm in good. fact, there is there is there is there there are statistics that say I think one in five people have dropped their phone oh in the dummy. <laughs> oh dear! I'm ashamed to be a part of the statistic, but it's fact nonetheless. So, Ritesh, can you tell me how water resistant are we talking? You know, how much coverage have I got on my smartphone? Look, our, our, our phones are water resistant. They're not waterproof mm. or they're not completely waterproof. And that's what causes the confusion. In fact, um, you may have heard about a fortnight ago, Samsung Australia was fined about $14 million by the um, Australian Federal Court because they were misrepresenting uh, in their advertisements the water resistance of their Galaxy phones. Mm. Uh, and as a result, you know, if our phones get submerged in water for a longer period of time, the phones stop working. Uh, we are unable to charge them. So when buying a phone, we are usually guided by something called the ingress protection rating or the IP rating. And... Uh, the IP rating tells us how much of our device or what level of liquid uh, the phone can withstand. And so with this IP rating that we're seeing, it's, it's obviously going to be helping to guide our choices in what phone will be the most water resistant, as you said, for us. So is there a brand that you personally recommend when it comes to being as water resistant as we can? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't recommend a brand. I'd recommend being guided by the IP rating. So the reason I say I'm not recommending a brand is because when you go looking for, shopping for a phone, both the Apple and Samsung's latest phones have an IP rating of 68, IP68. So six uh, refers to protection against um, solids, which means such as dust or dirt, whereas eight refers to protection against water. Now, IP68, so six, so the rating actually goes from zero to six for uh, for solids, and it's zero to nine for water. So 68, well, usually, well, that it means it, it's, it's well protected. However, the reason I'm not recommending is because there is difference. Although both phones have an IP68 rating, Samsung's phones are only resistant to a maximum depth of 1.5 meters for up to 30 minutes, whereas with the same rating of IP68, Apple's phones are resistant to a maximum depth of 6 meters for up to 30 minutes. So now if I had to choose, I'd, go, I'd possibly go Apple because I'd say, all right, well, my phone or an Apple phone can withstand a depth of six meters rather than Samsung, which is 1.5 meters. Mm. Does that make sense, Jesse? Mm. It feels like it's all in the fine print, and these are things that I wouldn't know when when explicitly going out to choose my phone. And yes. for someone like me who does tend to make those accidents with my phone and potentially be a little bit careless, I suppose I'd love to know that my, my water damage might be covered in the warranties, but then I do know that sometimes companies like Samsung and Apple, Apple don't actually cover that water-resistant damage in the warranties. Why is that? Uh, look, I think they're trying to protect their own interests. When the IP ratings are assigned, Jesse, they, they, their testing is done under lab-controlled conditions. 
when we are using our phones, we are using them in a real life environment. When we go swimming or snorkeling, they, they, these are not lab controlled conditions because when we're swimming or snorkeling, uh, the speed might be different. The water, uh, sorry, our movement might be different. The water pressure and the alkalinity are all different. And that's why liquid damage is not covered under phone warranties. Mm, too many variables to control, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so I suppose with this in mind, do you sort of see a potential for smartphones in the future to be completely waterproof instead of just water resistant? I would hope so. But having said that, it's very difficult to full to make fully waterproof phones. And the reason I say that is because... Um, the phone has several components that have to be protected from both dust and water. And when you look at your phone, you know, it's got so many buttons and switches. Mm. It's got the speaker and microphone outlet that needs protection. It's got the camera that needs to be protected. It's got the flash. It's obviously got your screen. It's got the back case. It's got the SIM card tray. It's got the USB port. All of these ingress points or entry points have to be uh, made waterproof. Although companies, you know, they've, they've 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 come a long way. You know, you go back a decade. We didn't even have water resistant phones a decade ago. At least today, we have phones that can withstand that that depth and and time that I mentioned. But having said that, um, Jesse, I wouldn't advise your listeners to really go swimming with their phones. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because let's say you've been using your phone for one year. And unknown to you, it's developed a small crack in the case, very uh, small hairline crack, and you haven't noticed it. And you're just being guided by the IP rating of your phone, and you go swimming with it. Now, water will enter through that small crack. So, you know, you really have to be careful. Although having said that, I'm sure if you're at the pub and you you spill a glass of beer over it, 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 it might withstand that. It will withstand that damage. <laughs> oh, Ritesh, you know me too well. I feel like these are all of the things that I definitely need to think about and maybe just try and be a little bit more idiot-proof myself and for my phone's sake. That was Dr. Ritesh Chug, Associate Professor of Information and Communications Technology at CQ University Australia, talking us through all things smartphones water-resistant as opposed to waterproof and how you can best defend yourself and your phone against water damage. 